It's a funny place to be, stuck in a seemingly mundane world with an inner knowing that the universe is so much more than our mortal minds can comprehend. Yet we all have the capacity to know peace and our oneness with the wholeness of life. And through these interviews, discussions, and reflections, it is my intention to share this possibility. I'm Ryan Kurzak, and this is the Kriya Yoga Podcast. My Kriya Yoga teacher, Roy Eugene Davis, would often make this statement. Don't affirm what you don't want to be true for yourself. Don't affirm anything that you don't want to be true for yourself. He believed in the power of our words and our thoughts, but also our intentions. And on the spiritual path and in life in general, we can often sabotage the potential of our life before we even engage any possibilities to make a positive change. Because we don't believe that something positive could occur for us. We don't believe that we are good enough or have the ability to learn and grow. Or we just have a lot of negative self-talk. And this is an obstacle to... um, our Kriya Yoga process, but really it's an obstacle to living effectively in this world and to living as we're meant to, as spiritual beings temporarily interacting with this world of form and this world of matter. So he would affirm, he would say, don't affirm anything that you don't want to be true for you. Now, this this doesn't mean that he wanted you to ignore reality. You know, if you have a weakness or if you have a a disability or if you have um, something that's just difficult for you, well, sure, you can admit that you're not quite as good as you could be in a certain area. But on the other side of that, you can take the time to decide, to affirm, yes, but this can get better. Yes, my understanding can improve. Yes, my situation can change. And if you are able to do that, if you're able to make that statement, and even if you're just doing it superficially at first, you do it enough, eventually you can start to make that statement with greater intentionality. And when you make those kinds of statements with greater intentionality and with a greater sense of belief in yourself, what tends to happen is you then see possibilities that might not have been so obvious to you when you were more in a uh, negative state, when you were affirming more of the negative aspects of your life and situation. So this is helpful for us in all areas of life. If you're having difficulty in relationships, rather than saying, well, this is just a pattern that I keep repeating. It might be, and I think it's okay to admit that. But consider, is there another way that you can look at the situation? And you can you can say, yes, this is a pattern that I keep repeating, but I can see a new way now. I can feel that there's another possibility here. And even if it doesn't manifest in your awareness immediately, the more you're able to make that statement, the more you're able to, again, affirm that as a possibility. What I have found and what many other people have found is that Bit by bit, it's like your awareness expands, your consciousness expands, and you then start to see that you do have a greater capacity to make different choices, or you see uh, other opportunities for relationships in your life. It all comes from the first step of allowing it to be possible. It's as though you're just giving yourself an excuse to experience something different. This can be true for our health. This can be true for our finances. This can be true, really, most importantly, for our spiritual life. So when you think about yourself as a spiritual being, temporarily relating to this world of form, 
You know, many people think that we're here to escape, to get away from all of this. Well, this world, this experience exists for a reason. And there are actually good things in the world as well. And as spiritual beings, we can make choices that tend to bring more uh, of that positive, that, that more beautiful experience into our lives. And in order to do that, we kind of have to look for it. Uh, you might notice how when you're in a bad mood or when things are just going wrong left and right, you tend to see how everything is going to go wrong. Or when you're in a good mood and things are flowing well, you see opportunities everywhere. Well, what most people do, what people who will say have an ordinary consciousness, which is just the people in the world, uh, they are subject to the changes of their moods, of their mind, of their emotions. And so when, when the, the, the ocean or the waves or the, the storm of the mind and the emotions shift into a, a darker, heavier state, they just roll with it. And then they see everything in that kind of dark and heavy state. When it shifts to the positive or the sunnier side of things, they just let it happen and they enjoy it. And that's, of course, fine. But as yogis, it's important to recognize that we are more than our minds and we are more than our emotions. And while we cannot control everything in life, we can make choices that allow us to experience um, more supportive and more enjoyable aspects of life. We can make those choices. Even in very difficult situations, we have the ability to make a choice. And this is why in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali and in the Bhagavad Gita and other yogic texts, there are statements like, the yogi is not troubled by pleasure or pain, heat and cold, gain and loss. It's pointing out, these texts from these ancient sages are pointing out that the yogi, while these things may come and go in their life, the core, the essence, the spiritual essence of what you really are, number one, doesn't have to be affected by those things. And number two, um, once you recognize that who and what you are doesn't have to be defined by the weather patterns of the world, that's when you really start to become spiritually free. And that's the purpose of Kriya Yoga, the purpose of meditation. And ultimately, one of the main reasons I feel that Roy Eugene Davis would say things like, don't affirm that which you don't want to be true for yourself. Because if you hold that statement and you consider that, immediately you have to become more aware of what's going on in your mind, of what's going on in your emotional body, of, of what's going on deep in your psyche. It might take some practice to kind of get the hang of that, but just acknowledging that that statement is something worth paying attention to, then it's as if you step back, you, you step uh, back into the core of your being and into your essence, into the real you. And then when a thought comes up, such as, oh, I could never be self-realized, you know, Yogananda was special. Um, that's not anything I could do. Well, you can think about that. Hmm, do I really want to affirm that? Or do I want to choose to say, I might not understand how Yogananda did it right now, but it's possible Yogananda did it. Other students have done it. Other Kriya yogis have done it. I am part of this, tra this tradition. I am part of, uh, I am a spiritual being. That you don't have to be part of anything. You can just admit that you're a spiritual being. And so since I have even the capacity to notice that thought and to not be defined by it, well, I can imagine and, and consider that it is possible that maybe, yes, I can understand uh, what it means to be self-realized like Paramahansa Yogananda. Or maybe I can imagine what was Ramana Maharshi's experience like? Or if there are things that you know you need to change in your life, 
rather than saying, well, you know, I have this history. I've done this so often. My father did this. It runs in my family. Well, every time you say that, you are affirming that you are kind of stuck in that pattern. And sure, as long as you affirm it, you probably will be stuck there. And even when you stop affirming it, you might be stuck there for a little bit longer. Um, but if you can begin to say, you know what, I can make different choices. I don't have to behave that way. You might have a little resistance because psychologically you are attached to your personality that behaves in a certain way. But remember, you're not your personality. And this is one of the easiest yet hard parts of, of yoga because once you start to recognize you're not your personality, you begin to understand the freedom that you, you do have. But of course, one of the things we have to wrestle with is we're very comfortable with who we are often. And sometimes we want to experience um, clearer states of consciousness where we want to understand the deeper meaning of things spiritually, but we don't actually want to change inside. And um, you know, one of the one of the biggest obstacles to successful yoga practice or to even being a successful human being in this life is suffering from a false sense of self. It's called asmita or the sense of I-ness. You know, I am an individual. Um, and oftentimes that which we consider to be an individual is this collection of, of habits and patterns and tendencies and uh, neuroses and those kinds of things. So the moment we start to acknowledge um, the moment we start to think about, hmm, I'm not going to allow, I'm not going to affirm anything that I don't want to be true for me. That immediately forces you to practice self-analysis, to begin to analyze your internal dialogue, to begin to analyze how you live your life. Do you live your life as though things aren't going to work out? Well, sometimes that's smart. Um, but if you can admit that things sometimes don't work out, you're not affirming it, you're just admitting it. But then you can, uh, on the other side of it, affirm, well, I'm going to figure out how to change that. So you can admit, sure, in the past, most of the time, these things don't work out. But what you can affirm is, but I'm willing to figure out why. And I'm actually willing to do the work to make the change so that things do start to work out or I do have a greater sense of understanding. And I think that's an important point in all of this um, because when we talk about these kinds of topics, it can cause people to um, start getting engaged in magical thinking. And I'm not encouraging magical thinking. And magical thinking is what? It's if you change your thoughts, all of a sudden your reality is gonna change maybe sometimes, um, but really you change your thoughts so that you can change your behavior so that your experience changes. So there's got to go from, it's got to go from thought to behavior and then persistence, because sometimes we just try to change our behavior once or twice and we don't actually get the full, um, we don't stick with it long enough until a change actually occurs. Um, so we, we don't want to encourage magical thinking here but we do want to encourage possibility thinking. And when you can entertain possibilities and you are willing to actively try new things, even if you fail, again, you've probably heard me say this before, if you try something new and you succeed, you'll be happy, you learn something. Well, if you try something new and you fail, you still learn something and then you gain wisdom what not to do next time. And part of being a, a yogi is being a conscious being. That's really what it means to be a spiritual being, just a conscious being. And the more you, you practice this kind of self-analysis and you undertake it upon your, you, you, you take it upon yourself to change from within and you, you persist with it. And then you let the behaviors which come from those, those new ways of thinking to come forth, you will tend to find your life transformed. Now, I was hesitant a little earlier because sometimes things happen in life which are beyond our capacity to change 
through our thoughts or through our behavior. However, in those situations, it doesn't mean that you avoid being a possibility thinker. It doesn't mean that you avoid um, being more optimistic. It doesn't mean that you stop affirming what you want to experience. Sometimes those negative or those difficult experiences in life, which we can't change no matter what we've tried, no matter how many different directions we've gone, no matter how uh, much we've embraced new possibilities, sometimes those experiences in life aren't there to change our immediate circumstance. They're there to change us on the inside. They're there to allow us to entertain the possibility of internal well-being even when things seem dire. And this is one of the most important parts of yoga. Because again, the yogi, the soul, the spirit within is, is not truly affected by what goes on externally. And so sometimes when difficult things happen for us, it can simply be a way of driving us more fully inward to what is real. And I'm not saying that's an easy thing to accept or to live through or to process, but I will say that <laughs> it's a very real, um, valid um, reason uh, that helps us grow spiritually. Because it's easy to be spiritual when everything's going your way, isn't it? It's easy to say, oh, I am the infinite spirit. Everything is divine when all you see is roses and um, you know, unicorns walking down the street. But you know when you're awake, when you're clear, when the meteors are fallen and everything's being torn apart and you absolutely feel and know, well, I am infinite spirit and I knew this wasn't going to last forever anyway, uh, so I'm all right. Now, I'm, I'm making light of the situ any kind of situations that anyone could go through because there, there's a, a number of difficulties that anyone can experience in life, uh, as you might know. But when it comes down to it, um, the yogi, you certainly are encouraged to make choices such that your life is harmonious, is full of as much well-being as possible. But by making those choices and having that experience, when things don't work out so well, you have a, a reserve. You have experienced strength. You have experienced well-being. And ideally, that gives a resilience to see clearly through the trials that come and go. So even in difficult circumstances, difficult situations, Roy would still say, don't affirm anything you don't want to be true for yourself. And that can take you on a, a, bit, of a, a bit of a spiritual journey, a bit of um, even a journey towards self-discovery. And I found this to be one of the most important um, teachings that I learned from Mr. David. You, you probably already heard me talk about it in the, the previous podcast um, where I was um, discussing what I learned from Mr. Davis, but I thought it, it's important to spend a little more time uh, discussing this in, in a bit more detail. Now, let's let's go a little bit longer and let's talk about how this relates to your spiritual life specifically, your spiritual study. Well, you've heard me say often that you're never going to get any more spiritual than you are. You are already as spiritual as you're going to get because the spirit is spirit. Your realization may change. Your understanding may change. But what you are, the core, the essence of you is absolutely pure spirit. And sometimes when people begin practicing meditation or studying the yoga sutras or trying to um, live a, a yogic lifestyle, or maybe they learn about Ayurveda, um, the science of life, the um, natural health care system from India. And they become frustrated because it's hard, because it's difficult, because it's not easy, because it requires a lot of change. Well, it's in those moments, it, it's those moments that are ripe to admit when you've experienced some difficulty or, or a lack of understanding, 
but it's in those moments where it's it's a good idea to affirm but i'm i i can know what this means i can know what it means to practice yoga i can know what it means to meditate well i can learn how to master my states of consciousness i can understand what that means when i hear roy jean davis or yogananda or anyone else who's teaching this process i can i can understand that even if it's beyond my grasp i can understand that and feel it and mean it and with all of these things when you affirm feel as though it is actually true for you and what you'll notice is when you affirm it as though it's true and then you get a little bit of anxiety or a little bit of fear or a little bit of anger well that's not a problem that's just revealing to you where you might have some blocks you know if you affirm yes i can understand how to live a healthy lifestyle but then you get all angry and you think yeah but my parents said i'm a product of my genetics and so i'm also going to have their health problems well that's revealing to you oh well one of the sources of your difficulty is that you're really believing a lot of what you learned from your your family and maybe you do a little research and recognize that genetics certainly are important um but through ways that you live, you can change how certain genes express. So at all stages of the process, there is something that you can learn about yourself. And when you affirm something positive or a possibility for yourself and the negative self-talk comes in, that's not a problem. That's just pointing out to you what, what the source of your inability to move forward in a positive direction is. Or when you try to do something new and then over the next several days you find yourself becoming depressed or a little morose well what that's indicating to you as you try to as you try to make positive changes is that there's something within uh that you <clears throat> that you identify with a, a type of sadness or a lack of self esteem that that is really what's preventing you from feeling like it is possible for you to make these positive changes or to grow spiritually or to understand a certain spiritual topic or a spiritual way of being. And you can just admit it. I see this. I feel this. But you know what? I can figure out how to experience positive growth anyway. Now, without spending a lot of time on this, because I talk about it a lot, and getting help from a counselor or a therapist when those things come up that is ideal and that is your best that is the best thing you should do some things we can handle on our own um, but we don't want to waste time in this life and what many people do is they've got all kinds of blind spots they think they're super um, conscious and they understand they've done a lot of personal work which means they've read a lot of self-help books um, and they keep trying to move forward but it, it's often very helpful to have another person, a counselor or a therapist, who can see your blind spots and point them out to you. So it, it can work in tandem with your, your spiritual practice and, and this, this desire and this intention to grow, to live a more harmonious life, to wake up spiritually speaking. And this is the Kriya Yoga process itself. It's not just sitting there meditating. That's fine. You learn to do that. And you can do that for hours on end, but as soon as you quit meditating and you get up and the anger comes back or the frustration comes back or the negative self-talk comes back, well, that, that's not a whole lot of help for you. Uh, you, you. The progress that you make in Kriya Yoga is demonstrable in how you live your life, how you perceive your life, how you move forward in your life, how you experience life, your resilience, and your deeper understanding about the processes of life. And that comes, meditation is a help spiritual study is a help but that comes through this process of mastering your states of consciousness and doing whatever it takes to affirm that which you do want to be true for yourself and to believe it and to feel it and to move into it and to grow into it and to do the hard work and to figure out the specifics that are required for success in that endeavor and then if you utterly fail because that's possible you learn something there have been many things in my life that I've wanted to do as if I, if I did not do it, my life would not be complete. And I completely failed and I tried really hard. And what did I learn? Well, I guess I didn't really want that as much as I thought I did. And I, I made peace with that. I was able to let it go and move on. And then able to focus on those things that deep down inside, I was really interested in doing. I really wanted to do. 
And so having a life of successes and failures is not a problem. That's just being, that's working as a spiritual being in this human experience. And in time, the more you do this, you start to recognize where the energy from the spiritual level flows that you can follow, that will sustain you, that will help you even through difficulties. And you will find that you are able to tap into uh, the knowledge and the, the, the insight of where not to go. So it's really just this one phrase, this one statement, don't affirm that which you don't want to be true for yourself. If you just consider that phrase, and as you go through your life, you pay attention to how you feel and how you think, and you let this kind of be in the background to inspire you to make changes in your approach to life, um, you will make great gains, spiritually speaking, but also in your, uh, in your secular endeavors, we'll say, you, know, you are an individualized expression of this infinite consciousness. So you as an individual do have a role to play here, do have things, you do have things to explore on a individual level. And the better you get at those, in a way, the more harmony uh, comes about on the, 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 the macrocosmic level, I guess we could look at it like that. So that they, they go together. The better you live your individual life, the greater awareness you have of your spiritual life, beyond name and form, beyond your small sense of self. And this is essentially why we are here in this world, not to escape from it, but to learn to meditate, to study, to go within, to know what we are as our essence, as spirit, but then how to interact in this world of form, in the world of nature, from that perspective of spirit, from that perspective um, of this greater infinite consciousness that we are all a part of. So as you live your life, remember these words from Roy Eugene Davis. Don't affirm anything you don't want to be true for you. And of course, the follow-up is affirm that which you do want to be true for you and apply this to your health and your well-being, your spiritual study, your capacity for relationships. Heck, I do it when I'm learning a musical instrument. When I start learning something new and it's hard, and it's taken me months, I can get frustrated, but I say, this is hard, but I know I can do this. I know I can figure this out. And sure enough, it might take longer than I expected. Um, but I find even in those situations with our hobbies, with the small things in life, don't save it for the big things, save it for everything, small things, big things, everything. And then it will start to permeate your life. And you will begin to see that as a yogi, you do have greater control over your states of consciousness than you give yourself credit for. And you will learn that you don't have control over everything, but you, you will be much better able to interact with the forces of nature, the possibilities of life. You will be able to much better navigate the storms of your life, the difficulties of your life. And you also find that um, your successes become more meaningful and more impactful for you. So once again, remember this, don't affirm that which you don't want to be true for you. Never affirm that which you don't want to be true for you. And then affirm, feel, believe in that which you do want to be true for you. And once you believe in it, actually do some research on how to get a plan to make it happen. So be realistic and inspired be realistic and inspired. And this will take you a long way in life and also on the Kriya Yoga path. This episode of the Kriya Yoga podcast was made possible by donations from Kriya Yoga apprenticeship students and supporters of our Patreon community at www.patreon.com forward slash Kriya Yoga.